Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we have another episode of Space Engineers Experiments. And it's kind of a mixture between a how-to and just playing around with gondolas. Alright, so to begin with today's experiment, I wanted to try and see if I could make a gondola system that follows a railing system that turns and go up and down the rail system. So in order to do that, I decided to work with the same things I've been doing, and that is the rotor wheels. So that's the same things I've used for the underground base build, and using that as elevator, drilling systems, and everything like that. And also, of course, drilling through that mountain far, far forward from us, as you see there. So I used the same concept, turned it into somewhat of a gondola system, and create a rail so that it can follow. So I wanted to experiment with seeing if we can make such a thing, but with curves, turns, and also making it go up or down the rail system in that way. So the best way to do this, initially I did create a system where it was static. So that means everything was connected, it doesn't have a rotor system right here. And it kind of goes through the turn okay. Uh, it's a bit of a hit or miss, sometimes it gets stuck, sometimes it breaks things. But giving that rotor over there, right in the middle, to make these two hugging rotor wheels uh, a more spin or gyro part system to it, it allows it to give it a little bit better chance to go through this turn. So to talk about this turn itself, um, initially what I did was add a slope block. The generic slope blocks as you see here in yellow. So that's what it was previously. And I just made it go in this diagonal here, but it wouldn't go through perfectly. So sometimes it just gets stuck there. So I decided to put a track system that had included this block here, which is the slope two by one by one base and added the tip on it as well. So you see that right there. I'll just put it that way. And then I connected the slope blocks on the other side. So it makes that diagonal. So that's how I created this turn. And I did the same exact thing, but just going upwards onto this track here. So that's how I created the track. Let's talk about the gondola system also. So the top part is basically the moving part, the rotor wheels that we've been making and seen a couple of times. So the most important ones will be the, the one that's hugging a track from left to right, which is these two here. And also created two more in the back. And then of course, we need another point of contact, which is this one here that's in front for rolling forward and backwards. We didn't add one on the bottom because uh, it's not 100% necessary for this kind of build. So usually you need four points of contact, but since this is going more horizontal, let's not worry too much about that. Because the gravity is going to take care of that point of contact in that way, if that makes sense to you. So yeah, so it's a basic system. It's basically using top hugging rotor wheels and then left and right hugging rotor wheels and that's pretty much it. I made the system as simple as possible so um, the velocity for the rotors are all the same. So currently the top rotors are on a negative 20 velocity so these four here and then the side hugging ones not all of them are actually have any velocity at all. So only one side, which is the left side, which is, if we look at it this way, the left side is this one, this one, and this one is the left side that has a negative 20 velocity. The opposite side actually has no torque, no velocity. So that way we can control it easily, um, having it all go up negative 20 or positive 20, versus having to sh change them on both sides. Because if we want velocity on this side, on the right side, we would need to make that a positive versus this one a negative velocity. So if I want to play around with sensors and everything to speed it up on a you know long course, I want to be able just to have one kind of sensor to indicate all these voters need to go like negative 30 or negative 40, negative 50. So I didn't want to mess around with this so it says one side goes negative 40 while the other side goes positive 40 because uh, that causes more confusion than anything so I try to avoid that as much as possible 
by just turning no torque and no velocity for one side and match the left side with the top side rotor wheels. And in this particular build, the top rotor here, just to give it a give to make its turn, has no velocity and no torque as well. And then back here is just a connector to charge the system and connect the system so it doesn't collide and break. So this system, in my experiment with it, works pretty well. But again, it is still a little bit of a hit and miss. And sometimes it will either get stuck or it will break the trail or the wheels from the gondola. So let's give it a go and see how it operates today. All right, so I'm going to let go of the connector. And it's going to make its approach to the turn. So there's a reason why I made the top rolling rotor wheels um, so long. It's because once it makes the turn, you don't want it to fall off the track. So I made it a little longer so it has the connection there. So as you see here, it's going to hit that turn for the front. And the rotors on the top spins a little bit. And it makes the turns per pretty nicely. I wouldn't say perfect. But it's pretty nice curve or turn from there. And it just gives that extra give. So if it was a static grid without the um, subgrid, it potentially can make it. But it, it I, in my experience with it, it has either broke or gets stuck for the most part. This one, this way, this build actually gives it a bit of a chance so that it doesn't break as easily. Or uh, get stuck too often. So now we're making the approach to go up. And you need the front ones to make sure it goes up so that you don't collide in, 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 the, in, the, in the back of it. And then all of it eventually will catch on and go up. So it looks like we're getting a little stuck here because it's, it's catching. It's not falling down fast enough in the back. But once it touches all four wheels, we should be climbing up. And when I say should, it, it usually does. But it looks like it's not working today. Uh, for whatever reason, so... Hmm. Alright, so I, I fixed it somehow, and honestly, the way I fixed it was a bit weird. Um, all I did was actually remove this block that was connected to the track. And the system decides to work again. Which is honestly a bit odd, but it works now. So, I don't know what to say. I'm a little bit speechless right now <laughs> so as you see the system works by climbing up the ramp perfectly without having it getting stuck so all i did was remove that piece that was connected to the track and it worked i don't know how that works but it does <laughs> all right so as you see here once it got lifted up it takes the time for it to fall back down and if we want to bring it down it it's a little bit scary when it goes down, but it also works. Um, again, I think sometimes it can be a hit or miss and it will break your track or something's going to break on your gondola system here. So my gondola system not long enough, so it collides into the track a little bit. But the scariest part is right here when it's kind of diagonal. But luckily, it was a slow enough fall to gather itself and bring it backwards nice and slow. So yeah, so the system is a little bit wonky here and there, but without that piece that was connecting it, it worked perfectly fine. I don't know how that works, but it worked. So let's leave it as that. But yeah, it's going backwards, works the same way as it goes forwards. It makes the turn perfectly fine. And if you're making a system like this, I would suggest to stray away from making the system go up um, diagonally. Uh, so that it doesn't cause that weird collision or weird issue or potentially break the whole system. The turn is more important because, you know, sometimes you want to get to a spot. It's not perfectly straight. You just want to make a turn just a little bit. You can definitely make that turn by using those 2x1x1 by one by one base and the tip and then combine it with the slope blocks. All right, so now we have our second build, which is the same exact gondola almost, I would say. Close to it. And the top part has a little bit more wheels, a little longer, because I wanted to play with a different system, and that's using the hinge blocks. So the hinge blocks are acting as the swaying portion of it to pivot on the turn, on the track. 
So as you see here, the hinge block is connected to these three blocks and they have the two side hugging rotor wheels there. And same thing with the reverse side of it, the back side of it. Uh, this sways left and right for these two side hugging rotor wheels too. It's a, pretty much the same exact build where the rotor wheels go forward at a 15 velocity or 20 velocity. And the left side has velocity, but the right side does not. So the, again, the right side has no torque and these hinges have no torque as well. So with my experience with this one, uh, this one was a little bit longer. So I had to make these um, side hugging ones a little bit longer. So it keeps on track while it's climbing up. But the biggest problem with the hinge system build, I find it to break a lot faster than it does with the all rotor system there. And when I'm saying all rotor, I meant that connection point to make it pivot left and right. The hinge to pivot left and right. For some reason, if I go 20 velocity, the track usually gets broken or the wheels get broken. Uh, I do a negative 15 or 15 velocity and there's a small chance it'll break, but it'll still break more often than the other system. So I think the hinge system is not as reliable as all rotor wheel system or all rotor system. So let's get, let's see how this works. So the system's going forward. I'm going to connect off of the connector and you'll see that it's going fairly slowly. I might have set it to uh, a 10 velocity because when I was playing around 15 velocity, all hell breaks loose is oh a big hit or miss for the most part. You'll see once it hits this turn, it's going to have the rotor, not the rotor, the hinge make a bit of a pivot to the right side of the gondola. So it allows it to make an easy turn, um, just like the other rotor system. So you see a heat there. It just pivots just enough and it continues to rotate the rotor wheels to allow for the rear one to also get in contact with that turn. So this, you can probably make this a little bit more compact. I made it a little long. Um, but I could have made it a little bit smaller, just a little bit, but it works pretty well on the turn. So again, if you're making a gondola system that doesn't require you to go up and down, um, you can use the previous system or this hinge system, but the hinge system, you have to go very slow on the turns because it will break easily for some reason. All right. So we're going to approach the upwards part of it. It may get stuck again because it has this stupid, uh, platform so I'm just gonna get rid of it to make it the same as be as the other one to ensure that it can have the ability to climb uh, as you see here things are falling down because some things are taking damage the other system didn't have that whatsoever so I'm inclined to say this system works but it, it's a bigger hit or miss than the other system by a lot But yeah, so this system, same thing, it climbs up uh, the same exact way. Because this is longer, I made these things longer as I mentioned before, just to keep it on the track. But it works pretty well too. So you see here, it should make its way up. And you could probably make the upward angle even higher if you wanted to. And then coming down gets a little scary just like before. But with a slower speed, it's, it's a little bit more safer. So uh, as you see here, it's just very diagonals a lot of it's off the tracks and it's gonna f make itself a little horizontal very soon once it gets to that angle there so again this system does work as you see here uh it, it, it gets a little scary when it's like diagonal um but it works okay not too bad but again if you add the speed here honestly if i had it on 15 or 20 once it collides into these wheels these will break right off. So right now it's on 10, so it's a nice slow uh, push. So it shouldn't break, but I'm not going to even allow it to collide into that. I'd rather have a connector system there instead. So what I'm going to do is reverse it to make sure it goes down pretty perfectly fine. And see how well it does. And we can take a look at the inside of the gondola, which is very, very simple setup so far. I didn't really design it too much. All right, so we're approaching the angle downwards of this track. And as you see here, it's not going to fall down like immediately. 
So the front one is kind of hanging on forward still. And then eventually it's going to start falling right there. And hopefully the front catches it slowly. It doesn't break the track, which I've seen it break the track once we go a little too fast. So this one is, is particularly super slow. And the gondola itself doesn't hit the track too, like the other system. But it works fine. It's just very slow. I would prefer the other system, the rotor system, to give the pivot where you can allow it to go faster. Because I could put a velocity of 25, 20, 25, and it makes the turn and it makes the upwards ascent and the downwards descent perfectly fine. Um, there's a chance they might break, but it's a smaller chance. This system, honestly, if you put it any faster, it's going to break, uh, which is not ideal. And again, this system works backwards the same exact way it goes forward. So on the turn, it's going to make that pivot and go through perfectly fine. The biggest problem is on both systems is this. With the turn, this is not far back enough. So it does kind of collide uh, with the track itself. But usually it's going to go a little bit further out but hang back up. But for some reason, the system is on its diagonal point here. But again, like I said, it's definitely a hit or miss with the hinge um, pivoting system. So when things break like that, all I got to do is back it up a little bit and go forwards a little bit and it should fix itself. But if not, then well, we just got to back out the whole thing and then come back out of it. All right. So you see here, it kind of fixed itself. But again, that that rotor here sticks out so much. But eventually, once it gets over that turn, it should bring itself back forward. Um, oh, there goes a break. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, this one's garbage. Uh, you can ignore that one. <laughs> All right, so if you wanted to play around with sensors to speed this up when you're running on a very long track, just going forwards or backwards, you could plop on a sensor on the gondola and then build a pillar on the side like so. So that once it detects a pillar, you could tell it to speed up the uh, rotor wheel groups or slow it down. So then when you're approaching a turn, uh, you can slow down or when you're approaching a long track to speed up so it can go forward a lot faster. I have not tested that theory or tested how fast the system can actually go. So that might be uh, another episode or part two of this experiment. But yeah, talk about the gondola itself. It is just made up of, you know, light armor blocks, as you see here, mixed in with some half armor blocks uh, to make it available on one side and not connected on the other side. So if you if you did want to make a pillar system like that before to support the track, you can actually put it down up to about three blocks here and then connect it over here and then go to the ground. So you can do something like that um, if you wanted to. But if you're not making these track pillars, you can actually just allow it uh, to and close up on both sides too. But inside the gondola itself is made up of all windows and some doors. So we have some passenger seats here so we can sit down, enjoy the view as the gondola gets moving. All right, so that's the end of the experiment today. Of course, if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to be alerted of upcoming episodes and videos. Don't forget to leave us some comments. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.